this is a joint work with, uh, with an uh, Egyptian uh, researcher, Shirin Alazawi, who is at uh, Santa Clara University in California. Um, and uh, it's preliminary work. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say that we don't have very strong results. And, uh, and the, the project um, uh, moved uh, from the initial uh, objectives and plan to uh, in various ways and that I will describe because of uh, data limitations and uh, 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 in the various surveys that I, uh, I'll be uh, talking about. Uh, so, so we conceptually we we started with a uh, with thinking that uh, there is a there's an inequality puzzle in the Middle East that some measures of inequality uh, make it look like there is very little inequality inequality of incomes is uh, um, has been found low in uh, in a number of uh, uh, MENA countries uh, on the other hand, there's some literature show, uh, uh, describing large inequality of uh, opportunities, uh, inequality in early childhood development, and um, inequality for, in uh, access to education, or access to health, or nutrition. Um, and uh, uh, so one goal of this project uh, is to uh, to solve the puzzle, to see what, what's the role of uh, regional migration uh, that could um, uh, reconcile these, uh, these different findings. Uh, the, thing is, uh, the thinking is uh, that uh, uh, migration, uh, okay. migration uh, can affect um, uh, opportunities and outcomes uh, directly. And uh, it also affects uh, measurement of uh, inequality. If, uh, if individuals uh, move, they, they fall out of the household survey. And uh, so their backgrounds and outcomes uh, can, cannot be measured. Um, and so, and we wanted to see whether this uh, um, can explain or uh, the, the puzzle or it would even exacerbate the, uh, the puzzle. Uh, if we if we measure correctly uh, all the people who started in uh, different regions, uh, um, whether the the corrected measure of inequality would uh, 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 would uh, be become more reasonable or even give us a greater puzzle. Okay. Um, and we also started with the realization that in the MENA region uh, there is substantial uh, migration, but uh, now that uh, we're in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, now I, uh, I might, uh, uh, m maybe these migration flows would not look as significant as uh, uh, when I just worked with the MENA region data and comparing them to other regions in the world. Uh, so that was the motivation to understand uh, migration and return migra migration, how it uh, affects different dimensions of inequality directly, and how it affects the measurement of the different dif dimensions of inequality. And the idea was to use a large sample of large harmonized surveys uh, uh, to study the migration experiences uh, uh, of uh, individuals across the MENA region, uh, the backgrounds of these uh, people, and uh, their economic outcomes at multiple points in time. So not only the, the initial situation and the, uh, uh, and the final economic outcomes uh, today, but uh, with the data from these surveys uh, to measure how the, uh, uh, how the individuals uh, 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 moved uh, uh, through different income levels or occupations uh, uh, to their situation today. Okay, and uh, and uh, so with this, the 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 larger objective was was to say something about uh, lifetime social mobility of individuals. Uh, on in various uh, dimensions, incomes or wealth or uh, education level or um, employment status, 
and also to say something about across generations. Uh, because some of these surveys have, um, have modules on, um, uh, on uh, family backgrounds and parents, and we could compare the economic outcomes of uh, uh, parents to the economic outcomes of uh, children. Okay, and uh, s some of those, uh, so these ideas, uh, uh, when we started working with actual data, they were confirmed that we can, we can evaluate some of these things. We can study the social mobility over time and to some degree across generations. But uh, uh, we had to change some definitions and change maybe the focus of the paper um, as we re realized some limitations. Okay. And so generally, we want to use something like the difference in difference approach to, uh, to see how the economic outcomes of individuals changed over time uh, as a function of uh, um, circumstances such as the experience with migration and, and so on. Okay. And uh, so we want to study it at the micro level for individual uh, people, individual migrants, how uh, their life situation changes over time, and also uh, look at the, uh, at the aggregate level to say something about the, the uh, measure of inequality, how, how we can we, uh, how does our estimate of the Gini coefficient change if we uh, correct for, uh, 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 for migration and uh, the dropping out of uh, migrants from, from the sample, okay? And, uh, whether we can say something about uh, intergroup inequalities and the uh, different dimensions of uh, inequality. Okay, so uh, as I said, the we uh, uh, the the big piece of work here was working with uh, with the surveys, um, and uh, uh, so today I will present uh, uh, some summary statistics of. Uh, the uh, the backgrounds of migrants versus non-migrants, and some information about their their outcomes, but uh, 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 but no regression analyses um, uh, because we we were fighting more with uh, the uh, the uh, data distributions in different uh, different countries, different samples, and. Um, and uh, thinking, let's say, at what level should, should we pool these surveys together? Uh, is it okay to pool multiple waves for a country? Can we use the panel component, or do we have to uh, use uh, each wave at a, uh, 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 separately? Okay. So the surveys are uh, uh, three waves of the Egyptian labor market uh, panel survey, um, 98, 2006, 2012. Uh, there's also a 1988 uh, wave, but that's um, a little bit more different. Even uh, among these three waves, uh, later on you will see that there are some appears, uh, what appears to be systematic differences, and it uh, calls into question whether it's okay to pool these uh, panels together. Um, Jordan, 2010-2016, that's a very, very recent uh, survey, which is currently still being processed by uh, by the uh, survey administrators, but uh, we can already start uh, uh, using the data. Maybe the, the results will slightly change as the process of uh, formatting the data set will uh, continue. And Tunisian 2014 sample, and I've been told by a knowledgeable person that uh, that, uh, uh, that survey has some uh, problems, and, uh, um, and so when we when we see statistics for the Tunisian survey, or when we compare statistics across the surveys, we, we, can, uh, we might find some unexpected results. Uh, so th this is a simple uh, table showing the, uh, the sample size in each survey. Uh, I will be focusing on 25 to 55 year old men uh, as a relatively homogeneous group. And even among this group, we'll see a lot of differences uh, across the survey waves. Uh, so among these, among these uh, 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 25 to 55 year old men, uh, we can classify pe people who, uh, as return migrants, 
if they if they responded in some way to uh, several uh, uh, survey questions. One question is, have you worked abroad for more than six months? Another question is, uh, in your last move of residence, did you move from abroad? Uh, in, the, in the move of your residence before the previous time, uh, did you, was it from abroad? So th there are some, um, uh, there are several questions that are asked across most of these surveys, and we use them to classify uh, uh, individuals as return migrants or um, non-migrants. Um, one footnote here is that originally we wanted to study migration rather than return migration, but there is uh, the data on migration is uh, on migrants is uh, is either missing or because it's uh, answered by the uh, household head or, or the household responder. Um, so we were skeptical about using uh, data on migrants and we changed the focus to return migrants. Uh, but that introduces other problems such as what we consider as non-migrants are not really non-migrants, it's the people who haven't migrated yet. Later when we look at the ages between return migrants and non-migrants, we'll see that there are systematic age differences, that uh, there's, uh, there's still a chance that the non-migrants are planning to migrate in uh, following years, and maybe they should not be concern considered non-migrants at all. Okay, and, uh, and the samples, uh, uh, so the sample sizes uh, differ, and they're all, they're so all supposed to be representative of the national population, but uh, we might worry about, I don't know, standard errors and the comparability of how precise things are because uh, each observation represents a different number of individuals in the real population, which can be a serious problem. Okay, I'll try to move. Uh, uh. So, so we, we try to uh, identify who are the return migrants versus non-migrants versus maybe people who cannot be classified. Um, uh, impute economic outcomes in real terms at various points in time and between generations. So uh, incomes or mon uh, any outcome in monetary terms is only available for the responding individual for the current time period. So we try to, uh, one idea we had was, well, we can use employment status and occupation uh, of the person in previous time periods and use the distribution of incomes today across occupation groups to impute the uh, incomes in previous uh, time periods. Okay, and, uh, that's, uh, and that's possible for several points in time where we may, we may not have the exact date when the um, the, the previous, uh, um, uh, 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 previous occupation was held by the individual, but we just generally know that we can compare the uh, occupation and income in the current job and occupation and income in the previous job or in the job before the previous job. So there's information about current uh, migrants. I think there have been presentations in the, at this conference about, about that. But uh, we decided to ignore the issue of current migration. I, I think I will show one table for current migrants simply because uh, the amount of information we have about current migrants is much more limited and maybe uh, uh, less uh, trustworthy. Uh, uh, less, uh, trustworthy. Okay. So, just quickly about, uh, as I said, about uh, earnings. We know what uh, incomes are typical in each occupation or occupation group in uh, the current year and using the information on the occupation group of the individual in the previous job, in the, in the job before the previous job, or eight years ago, and the occupation group of the father 
at the age, uh, at the same age as the individual is now, we can use those occupation groups to impute uh, the approximate uh, income that uh, uh, the previous generation was earning and, uh, and what this in, uh, the, the respondent was earning in prior uh, years. Okay? Of course, there is, uh, that th creates uh, noise because we are, uh, we are not taking the whole distribution of incomes at each point in time, but we are essentially uh, uh, summarizing those incomes by the average in each occupation group. Um, one uh, nice thing about the, the maybe small advantage of, it, uh, of this approach is that this way we get uh, real incomes. We don't have to worry about inflation or regional cost differences uh, because the, uh, uh, we are taking today's earnings and we are just um, we are using them to impute prior uh, earnings. And then another measure of outcome uh, can be the, the wealth index. So here uh, we take advantage of uh, uh, the different variables in the surveys on um, household assets and, uh, 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 and maybe productive agricultural assets, the amount of land that uh, 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 households own. And, uh, and in this way, try to improve a little bit on the on the standard approach uh, taken, so we, we really try to uh, include all of the all of the available household assets, um, particularly because we're thinking that um, some of these migrants come from rural areas, and it's important to include the the assets that are typically owned in rural areas rather than cities. Okay. Uh, now, because of the way we impute earnings and, uh, and wealth, we will be very careful whether we use uh, 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 these outcomes cardinally or just ordinally. Um, uh, we will really just look, uh, we will just use outcome quantiles. So we will look at relative, uh, the di uh, relative distribution of earnings and uh, wealth. Uh, so we will just look at which which fifth of the um, uh, sample the individual falls in in terms of their earnings and on, uh, in terms of their wealth. And uh, uh, we will tabulate joint ten densities of migrants and also of non-migrants on the distribution of uh, outcome quintiles at two alternative points in time. Uh, and to get a sense of uh, the mo mobility how the individuals moved over time across earnings quintiles or wealth quintiles, we will, we will compute this uh, Shorox mobility measure or mobility index, um, which, on, which really compares, it's a, uh, it's a simple indicator of uh, uh, the, the percent of sample who retained their position in the d distribution of earnings compared to other in, uh, the individuals who moved up or down from the previous uh, position. Okay. Okay, I think. Okay. Some descriptive uh, statistics about uh, the destination uh, countries of uh, uh, international mi uh, migrants. Uh, so this is among the return migrants, and this is about their most recent migration spell. Uh, uh, one conclusion from this table is that uh, across the different years, uh, different countries and years, there are different <coughs> patterns of uh, out-migration. Um, um, and there's also different concentration of uh, uh, the spread of uh, migrants uh, to, to the rest of the world. So for example, in Egypt, we find that uh, 97 or 98% of uh, return migrants went to 
one of uh, 10 countries, so which is a relatively narrow uh, region to which they migrated. But uh, let's say in Jordan, only 85% of migrants went into one of the 10 countries, and the other 15% of migrants went to other countries in the world. So, so I think one finding here is that there are systematic differences between uh, where people migrate to from Egypt versus Jordan, and Tunisia is somewhere, somewhere in between. Okay. We can also look at, let's say, uh, uh, be because of historical differences and geographic differences, uh, uh, Tunisian migrants tend to go to Europe, whereas Jordanian and Egyptian migrants uh, go to the rest of uh, the MENA region and to uh, the Gulf countries. Um, uh, and that might affect the economic outcomes of, of these migrants. Uh, a little bit of who are the migrants? What can we say about their, their backgrounds? Well, we can, for the current migrants, we can just compare, there's limited information on them, but we can compare the, uh, uh, the earnings in the occupation group uh, from which they migrated. So here, the sample is limited to people who, who were in the labor market, and they were, they were working before they migrated. And these numbers are the uh, average earnings in the occupation group where they worked, compared to the overall average. And we find that uh, uh, typically uh, migrants came from uh, lower income occupation groups. Um, it would appear that uh, in Egypt in 2006, uh, these return migra uh, these migrants uh, earned 125 Egyptian pounds compared to 304, so less than half of the, the, uh, the general mean. Um, but we, we see it, so in e Egypt 2012, again, the migrants came from relatively uh, less paid um, occupation groups. In Tunisia, the same thing. But in Jordan, we see a completely different picture. These migrants came from much, uh, uh, much richer occupation groups than uh, the, the general population. Uh, regarding urban residents at birth, uh, typically we find that, uh, 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 that migrants are, are more likely to be uh, from rural areas, except for Jordan. So in Jordan, we, we see a completely different pattern of, uh, of uh, 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 the background of uh, migrants than in Tunisia and Egypt. Um, we see that also about their, oops, about their education level. Um, Egyptian, uh, sorry, uh, Jordanian migrants are much more likely to be college educated than non-migrants, whereas in Egypt and in Tunisia, it's the less educated uh, individuals who tend to migrate. Uh, mean age, the people who went through migration already are older than the people who have not gone through migration yet. So that, uh, that creates the, the concern that uh, uh, we need to control for age uh, to, to really distill who is a non-migrant or who is a not yet migrant. Uh, in terms of uh, economic outcomes, um, we, can, we can look at different outcomes. Uh, individual wage earnings, household wage earnings per capita, or household wage earnings, wealth index per capita, wealth index, whether the individuals have a contract job or formal job. Generally, I think we've, we find that uh, the return migrants are doing better than non-migrants in the current time period. Uh, so, so now we would have to carefully look at uh, how they compared before their migration spell to how they uh, compare after the migration uh, spell. Uh, in this table, we, we can look at um, uh, average earnings between return migrants and non-return migrants currently in the previous occupation group, in the occupation group before the previous occupation, eight years prior, and father's occupation. 
I think one, one uh, interesting fact here is that when we look at uh, father's earnings, we don't see too much difference. These, uh, uh, there's no systematic pattern whether uh, uh, fathers of migrants or fathers of non-migrants earned more. Uh, but if we look at the following outcomes, in the current job, previous job, before previous job, systematically migrants uh, become more successful than non-migrants. Uh, we can draw a picture like this, um, showing that ge generally we see some upward trend in the, the occupation groups held by parents and held by the individuals eight years ago, positioned before the previous job, previous job, and today. Um, uh, uh, one conclusion from this graph is that, well, we see this premium that, so the dashed lines show non-migrants and the full lines show migrants, and we see this premium to migration, that migrants always uh, generally outperform non-migrants, but they always did it. Eight years ago, in the previous, uh, before previous job, oops, as well as today. So it's hard to uh, attribute this, this uh, migration premium to the migration spell. It could be some um, self-selection where these individuals, so, so maybe one way to summarize is that there don't appear to be family uh, effects, but individual effects, that these individuals were performing better even eight years ago, regardless of when they actually migrated. Uh, and uh, I will just show, uh, to compare, that's the last slide I will uh, show, we can compare the uh, income quintiles that the non-migrants or return migrants are today compared to where they were eight years ago. Or we can use a different point in time such as the, uh, the father's uh, occupation group earnings and we can see what is, uh, what is the extent of mobility. Uh, if this individual started in the, in the poorest quintile eight years ago, oops, eight years prior, this one, would they, would they still be in the first quintile or all the way up to the fifth quintile in the current time period? Uh, so, and uh, to, to get a simple measure of the social mobility, we would look at the individuals who are on the um, uh, diagonal of this matrix and individuals who are off the diagonal. And uh, we might also compare individuals who are up here compared to individuals who are down here, who improved their relative standing in the society or whose economic standing became worse off. Um, the one thing that I will just mention is that uh, return migrants uh, show much more mobility than non-migrants. Uh, just looking at the Shorox mobility index, we, 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 will, we would see across all the survey waves that the, the index of uh, mobility is higher among returned migrants than non-migrants. So, uh, so whether that's because of selection problems or because of uh, the actual return to migration, we see that uh, migrants uh, uh, tend to move more between their original economic position and the, the economic position today. Thank you so much.